Assalamu alaikum everybody Welcome to episode 149 of Freshly Grounded With big man Sam and Big Faze Big Faze And uh, we're just here chilling having a natter today Yep Yeah Little chin wag But guess what Sam What's that? We're going on tour baby What? Huh? The hell was that? You know, I mean um, They were going on a tour We're live Yeah no, we were freshly going on a tour yeah, yeah yeah But what was that? What did you do? Maybe like the jingle, for, new jingle for the tour? No, I don't think we should no? do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we are going on tour though. We're doing yeah. live, freshly grounded. It's going to be our third ever live event. However, we're doing three events. Birmingham, Manchester, London. I said Birmingham. Ma- yeah, okay, sorry. Birmingham, Manchester, <laughs> yeah. London. Uh, we love and respect all three cities and the people from them. We would love to see you come out and yeah. have a good time with us. Definitely. In, a, in the sense of come and sit, sit and... Enjoy, Watch, it, yeah. your, we're enjoy the show. Yeah, we're not going out after. Yeah, after. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we're doing a tour now. What is a freshly grounded tour? Have I? Uh, what is a freshly grounded event? Uh, we've had a lot of questions. Um, listen, guys, if you haven't been to one of our events before, um, you know they're great events. They are good. Yeah, no, no, genuinely, they are. We really have, we have good, such a yeah. good time. Uh, it's a, it's an opportunity for us to interact with our audience live. Uh, we have game shows. We have inspirational keynotes. Honestly, at the last event, I think people went through every single emotion. We had like an amazing keynote from a guy who um, is at the top of his field working for the world's most richest company and he uh, trains leaders in that company and he gave a talk uh, and he gave a talk about his life and there was not a dry eye in the room when he was talking about like when he's talking about how his wife passed away and, and how he had to deal with that and here's a guy who actually like trains people in how to deal with things like that um, and then we had like uh, fun times we had inspirational poems we had all sorts of stuff there's something for everyone um, and the other question we get is is it going to be the same kind of event? The same event, and it's not. Every event we try and make different, um, and it's going to be the same thing for the tour. Um, there, it's not going to be like Operation Excellence, and it's not going to be like Episode One Hundred. It's going to be its own thing. We're going to have different guest speakers. Uh, what you can expect is inspirational keynotes. So keynotes on how to improve yourself as a person, as a leader, as a um, in 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 every way, shape, and form. Uh, we're going to have people who relate to all different types of people. Um, Q and A's, game show kind of stuff. Where we're just having a laugh. Ultimately. Um, we wanted to create something that is like a halal alternative to going out on a night out, but actually having a good time. And it's not mo- it's not like Islamic lectures where you feel like you can't bring your friend because they're not going to want to listen to it or something like that. It's, it's, it's a halal show, inshallah. But rather than going to the theatre, you're still going to the theatre, but you're watching Freshly Going Live. Mm. Have I done it justice there, Sam? I think you did great justice to it. I think even people who I know went who maybe didn't doubt it but didn't think it would be that good have told me afterwards it was really, really good, well done. So that's kind of the people who kind of weren't really sure what to expect. They've gone and had a great time. And generally, I say it humbly, I think everyone we spoke to had a, had a great time and enjoyed it. So I, I recommend it everyone and anyone come in. Even, even you, I know that like doing the live events was never something that you necessarily were like, actively like going right when we start fresh going we got to do live events but at the same time you let me do it because i was like we got to do live events yeah and and then you enjoy it definitely right? enjoy it and that feeling afterwards when i come up to you i'm like yeah that was very very sick yeah amazing 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 it's just i, I also because i know how you think i don't know always know what to expect but you always pull it off bro and it's always Thank very you, good bro. i enjoy being a part of it so oh, appreciate that um guys grab your tickets if you go to freshlygrounded.com for us tour that's freshlygrounded.com for us t-o-u-r um, you can head over and then there's links for the B- birmingham london and manchester events um you can get discount on all of the tickets right now with the code early bird and just remember i forgot what i wanted them to remember just remember just remember, remember early bird early bird um t- tickets tickets uh, oh yeah it's gonna be a few days before Ramadan. so yeah. like just before Ramadan, get yourself in the kind of mindset the of spirit, like yeah. uh, performing at your best mm-hmm. and um and it'll be nice man it's on a weekend there's you ain't got work the next day unless you work weekends or nights in which case you do have work next day <laughs> and but i'd still say come yeah because uh, you've got two months or eight weeks or something to take uh time off work yeah. uh, if you're thinking about booking your tickets last minute we have had times in the past where people have said we're going to book our tickets they haven't got around to it and then it's been sold out and then the problem has been then that we don't have any more seats i remember in our first event um we sold out like six weeks mm-hmm. in advance and then everyone started hitting you up going, oh, Sam, exactly. I-, I was going to put my ticket and you said to them, I, I can't give you a ticket. There's <laughs> not any All seats. Gone. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so guys, honestly, if you're thinking, if you're not sure, it's, 
it's less than a tenner, I think, if you want to put a discount in uh, for uh, an amazing, amazing night out and um, something that I think everyone can enjoy. So book your ticket, especially going to forward slash tour. This episode is just a little chin wag that Sam and I had and we spoke about anxiety. We spoke about barbershops. Briefly. Not really. Anxiety and um, leadership. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just a general chin wag catch up, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, enjoy this episode, nice. guys. Episode one four nine. Hopefully, inshallah, next week we're gonna have one fifty, and we'll try and make sure we bring something powerful to the table for that. Yeah. As it stands, literally no idea. Nothing planned. Nothing. <laughs> make dua for us, please. <laughs> make dua, please. Serious start. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. And welcome to freshly grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I. Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. The no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends, Facebook and Sam. Really? Yeah. Uh, I just saw the post about Men's by uh, America, by the way. It's c- congratulations. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. And when, uh, I announced it yesterday. Oh, uh, I'm back. I only saw We've it worked today. on it for years, to be fair. But I just, yeah, I just posted it. That's amazing. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, no, it's good, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm proud of you, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, we're really, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're really, really happy, bro. To be fair. So you're gonna jump on a flight to the old Oregon, yes. the Big O. Yes, the Big O. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, we will be. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be nice. Yeah, really excited, man. I'll be honest. Like, if you were to ask me, like, a dream location it wouldn't necessarily be Oregon, Oregon, but it would be, it would no, it would be the USA. I'll, I'll to have a shop in the USA and and to be able to ha- tap into that market would be a dream come true. So barber culture is massive, there, isn't it? Massive, man. Massive. Yeah, it's great. You know, I often see on my explore page, and it's probably because I follow you and a few of the men's bar guys, so I get like some haircut stuff on my explore page. Yeah. But I see this thing, right, where, and I've never seen you do it, and I've never seen men's bar do it, mm-hmm. which is why I'm so confident um, talking about it. Because okay. <laughs> otherwise, if you guys are doing it, I wouldn't talk about it as much. More. But you see people, yeah, like they, they post a, p- a video of. Oh, 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 and, when you guys do it, actually, if you guys do it, it seems very genuine. Like someone's okay. come to your store and the guy's a mess and then he gets a chimp. But, but you see people's feeds and all it is, is it's like they've gone and asked for the most, like they've asked their client, grow your hair out for like <laughs> six months, grow your eyebrows out for six months, everything you're mm. and come in it's and, true, and it's film. True. And then they do the maddest transformation. Mm. But then sometimes it's like, I, I don't know how legit that is. So I saw one today that I, I have to show it to you. I'm, I won't mention the account or anything. Yeah. Not that I don't even know if the account, like, it's, it's like just some barber brand, yeah. But it's like a 13 year old ute, yeah. Mm. And it's like, it's like he's got white hair. And you think, I doubt at that age he has white, white hair. hair. It's well, like, like, why? So, like, it's almost like they spray paint his hair white, they've okay. grown his eyebrows up like, just so they can make him look so bad so that he can then look okay. good. Is that, do people do that? I don't know. Anything that creates good content, I'm sure people do. It, does, it is quite satisfying watching a big transformation, isn't it? It's satisfying. Yeah. Well, it's a bit, um, Especially when they do the whole thing, you get these really like big, hairy guys who are just covered in hair and they just take it all off. It's good, it's satisfying. But not when it's like... Show me what you're talking about. Though, yeah, I want to show you this. Oh, I've, I've, How will you find it? Did you save it all? It was, I know, that's, I'm thinking, what the, why you, didn't you're I... You're not going to be able to find it, are you? Yeah, I really wish I saved it, man. I'm not going to be able to find you it. You said it was a kid with white hair and long eyebrows. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I said. A little bit cre- creepy thinking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a page called Barba? Um, okay, I'm, I'm not going to spend too long on it yeah. because we are on a podcast. Yeah, we are. But I, I really want to show you. Um, but yeah, I mean, transformation videos are good if they're staged. I don't know. I don't know what to say. If it's good content, it's good content. That's true. Content is king nowadays. That's what they say. That's what you taught me years ago. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to forget about yeah, it. Yeah, forget that. Forget that. Because people listening don't know that you're sitting there trying to find it. Yeah, forget that. Forget that. Move on from that. Um, so congratulations. Another store Thank down. Thank you. Yes. And is that, are you on track with your target? I remember a few episodes ago you told us you had a target. Yeah, so everything's going yeah. Everything's going uh, in the right way so far. This year's been really good so far. Lots of things going on. Uh, we opened uh, Italy at the beginning of the year. Yep, no, Nap- Napoli. Napoli, which is really exciting. We're opening Barcelona at the beginning of next month, which is really exciting. Essex next month, which is exciting. 
And um, Portland, yeah, as well, inshallah. So it's exciting, man, really exciting. Yeah, we're on track. We've got lots of things going on. Exciting times for everyone. Uh, speaking about you the other day to someone. Um, All good, I hope. Oh, uh, the accountant, the Fisher Gun accountant. Mm. Okay. Because yeah, obviously good? he knows you're like, um, a, you know, part of Fisher Gun and stuff. So yeah. he's like, oh, how's Sam and stuff? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what, what's Sam up to? I was like, he runs like. what does he do sort of thing? Yeah, kind yeah. of thing, yeah. And I was like, because you know, these guys, they want to just like yeah, probably yeah. just get as many like clients stuff he was like of course yeah he's like what does Sam do I was like he runs like a really um, successful barber chain like probably like one of the most successful they open left right center like he's, he really does well for himself man and he's like oh that's amazing like um, yeah bring him bring him like something <laughs> <laughs> I was like he's got a whole team I said, they, I said they're too big of an operation man no not necessarily I'm always open to I'm always open to hearing out new new people to be fair Definitely. If it goes to accountants and stuff. I've been, I've gone through accountants since we've spoken about accountants. Yeah, accountants, yeah, uh, have, uh, yeah. Always remain, uh, always remain um, with an open ear. Your this guy's guy is good. Yeah, I know. I like the sound of him. To be fair, but yeah. he's Uxbridge. Is he Uxbridge? He's Uxbridge. Yeah, yeah, he's Uxbridge. Yeah, he's never say never. Who knows? Mm. You are in Uxbridge every now and again. To be fair, I am now. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite quite like coming up to Uxbridge now. Yeah. Old bridge. But yeah, so. Um, that was when I was speaking about you. Your, nice. your name. Your name often comes up in conversation. I suppose because we do Freshly Grounded here and stuff, so yeah. people come down and stuff. Does it annoy you? A bit. No, <laughs> no, 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 um, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't say not at all like that. <laughs> no, 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 only, no, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it doesn't, mate. Um, I was gonna mention something that it feels uh, weird to mention now because it's actually <laughs> such a weird, because it's a bit of a downer. But I wanted to talk about something, an experience I had recently um, to do with anxiety because we've we've spoken a few times at, about uh, anxiety and I yeah. think like um, every, everyone everyone probably has different experiences with times where their health is feeling low and their health is feeling high. And we've mentioned a few times that sometimes. Um, not only do you have to talk about that in relation to your physical health, but also with regards to your mental mm. health. And because there's this wave of like awareness in mental health, they can, uh, sometimes we can be skeptical about it and say, "All oh, right, there's also a level of like hypochondriacness." Yeah, to it. Certainly, certainly. But I basically recently went through. I had this like period, not period at all. Like, I went through this moment of like getting really bad anxiety in recent times that I can. Um, so this was a few weeks back, right? Okay. So I remember I was going. I I, I had this day where I was getting like re get, getting really bad anxiety, and I can't speak for anybody else as to what it is that pe different people experience mental health because I'm not a professional, I'm not a psychologist, but I can only speak through my experience. But I wanted to share this with you mm. on the um, mic because I realised the benefit from it, but I only just realised the benefit when I when I. Uh, reflected on it a few days ago and I thought wow that's such an amazing benefit that I've never considered before and it was a benefit of how the person who I was speaking to reacted so it was a friend of mine he knows who he is um, and he's probably going to listen to this but he probably doesn't know how much I reflected on it and he probably definitely doesn't know that how he reacted to it was the best way of reacting to it he was just being himself Yeah. but that's the that's what I think the benefit okay. the benefit lies in how to react to, to this, this situation so I'll explain the situation so I was going through this uh, period what, what, what I was anxious about doesn't really matter what I'll say is that um, something triggered it and then I started getting like bad anxiety and my anxiety that I was getting at that point I don't know what different people's anxieties are but my anxieties was really to do with overthinking I a, some, a, a situation triggered it and I started overthinking a scenario to the point of like there's like, when you start thinking that uh, things that just would never happen unrealistic things but you start worrying about them and you know people often say that don't worry about things that haven't happened yet mm -hmm. and um that's often for me what uh, where that happens yeah. is where i'm worrying about things that haven't yeah, happened of course, yet yeah. so anyway i i have a good enough relationship with this friend of mine where i feel comfortable to tell him i'm going through this thing right now and alhamdulillah, it just so happened that when I was going through it, I happened to be with him and it was just me and him. And so I've, the point, benefit one I want to take from it is that um, it's always worth us, every single person, being the type of friend where we feel like our friend would be able to approach us with something like that and they wouldn't be embarrassed to approach us with something like that. So that's like benefit number one mm -hmm. in it. Because I felt comfortable enough to tell him, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know if you clocked when we went for dinner, or, um, at one point I kind of switched a bit like my mood just switched and it was because I remembered something and, yeah. I, and then I started overthinking about this situation I started worrying I started getting anxiety and I, I can't shake it off right now mm -hmm. that's what I said to him when we were alone Yeah. 
And actually, should I tell you what happened before that? Before that, we were with another brother. And I said, and I didn't want to make the other brother feel uncomfortable, but I didn't know him very well. Mm -hmm. But I really was going through such a madness in my mind, I needed to speak about it. And so I said to the brother that I know, I said, bro, because um, I couldn't get a situation where we were, where we'd be away from that third brother. But using like Hikma, um, you don't want to ever make someone feel excluded, in it. So I didn't want to say, listen, I want to chat to you privately, because my man, even if he'd, even though he'd respect it, he might be, uh, you'd feel yeah, a certain course, type yeah. of way in it. So I just said to the, to my friend, I said, bro, do you mind dropping me? Um, I said, bro, just drop me off after. I, I, I literally, that's all I said, to, to, so that we'll be by ourselves. And bro, he just got it. Like, he might not have known what is, I, I was, I started worrying about how am I gonna get him alone so I can explain to him that I'm going through a bit of a madness. And the fact that he is in touch with communication and like my character enough to go, I was thinking to myself, how am I gonna word it to drop him a hint? And all I had to say is, bro, bro, I said, oh, bro, drop, me, uh, drop that person there and drop me off. And because that didn't make sense with regards to yeah. the route. Uh, he just said, yeah, cool. And he's kept it moving. I was like, even that in itself was such yeah. a big load of my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I was like, right, like, he just gets it. Yeah. And I said to him after, I said, bro, that's why. I said, he goes, yeah, I clocked instantly. So I just, I didn't question it because I didn't want to make it awkward. And he goes, what's up? And I said, bro, I've been getting anxiety, blah, blah, blah. So here's what happened, yeah. I explained to him what was happening. And he... And this is the bit that I think is a benefit is, is we can learn from how to be with someone when someone says, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, oh, I'm overthinking, I've got this kind of anxiety, I can't really, my head's not right. He basically, first of all, the thing that he did is he listened to me, like fully, yeah? But then what he did is he took it seriously. And I think the biggest fear that I would have had at that point is that if I spoke to him and he would not take it seriously, and I'll tell you why, it's because I would think, because I knew that what I'm saying is stupid. Mm. Like, in, I, in the sense that I know it's not logical. Yeah, yeah. I already know that what I'm saying is a situation that's probably never going to happen. But we're not talking about intelligence at this point. Because I'm intelligent enough to know that I'm overthinking and it's not realistically probably going to happen. But it, it's not a question of intelligence. It's At this point, my mind is frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't fix that always with logic, yeah. right? So... I, so, but, but, but even though he probably knew that the situation is simple, he took me seriously the whole time. He didn't, he didn't go, oh, brother, like, just stop it. You know what I mean, he was listening, like, serious, listening, right? Wow, okay, cool. Like, listening, 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 taking me, I was, so I was t telling more because I felt like someone was taking mm. me seriously. And then after it was all done, his response was like, look, I've not been through that situation, so I don't exactly know how. Um, I can't put myself in your shoes. What I can say is I've been through situations in the past where I felt anxious and I know that it's a horrible feeling. So um, uh, I, I would say to you that you're overthinking and that um, it's not realistic that like all of these things are going to happen. But um, I'm not going to say that because I know what it's like to go through anxiety. And him just saying that made me feel like he gets it. Yeah. Because I don't want someone patronizing and yeah, yeah, say to yeah. me, bro, you're overthinking. I know I'm yeah, overthinking, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 do, I, I don't need to be told you're overthinking or it's not a realistic scenario because I know that. I'm aware of it. I, but my brain can't, like, work with that right now because for some reason it's panicking. Because, mm -hmm. bro, even over... Uh, and I don't know if other people go through anxiety in terms of overthinking, but if I ever do go through anxiety, it's the overthinking that I go through. It could be a situation where I could... Remember we were talking about how we could overthink ourselves into anxiety by just going, you're in the shower, you get a little pain, you think, oh, what if I die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son's going to not have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that kind of... And then you start thinking, but it's not that realistic. Yeah. So anyway, um, so first of all, he took me seriously. Second of all, he gave me that advice. The third thing he did is he said... He goes, he, goes, he, goes, you told, he goes to me, you said that you've gone through this before. Um, when you've gone through it before, what got you out of it? And I was like, oh, that's true. You know? And I said to him, I said, you know what got me out of it? What got me out of it is remembering, telling myself that Allah doesn't want bad for me. So, and I know that Allah is how you think of him. So if Allah is how you think of him, mm -hmm. then... I, w I just have to think good of him and that he's gonna, he, that, that he's got me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, I said, I remember last time that made me feel a lot better. Just thinking, nothing. And in, even then he goes to me, he didn't even just say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, he goes to me, well, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a mad reflection. And to be honest, it's so true, isn't it? Like the fact that you, 
Allah is so merciful that just how you think of him, you think good yeah, of him. Yeah, he, yeah. He, like, be good, yeah. Brother, he was just like, he was just, he, all he was doing is listening. And like, now, because bro, at the time I couldn't, I couldn't reflect on what he was doing. And I don't think he even was doing it from that perspective. But now that it's completely, it's been a month or whatever, I'm just thinking about the conversation going, wow, he was a genius at how he was yeah. making me feel better. Then he goes, he go, he, 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 I think he had to go quite, travel quite far that evening. And he goes, listen, I'm, he goes, I don't, that's not important. I want to make sure that your mental health is good first. And so I didn't feel pressure for time. And then mm -hmm. when I, when I said to him, I said, bro, no, no, no I'm going to go. He goes, what are you going to do when you go back now? I said, I'm just going to go. I'm going to sort a few things out. I'm good. And then he goes, all right, cool. If you need me, just shout me. But 15 minutes later, he got to his destination. He got home because it was late. And he goes, um, he texted me. He said, bro, normally I, uh, I just want to say, I just want, he didn't bring up nothing, can he? He, but he just said, Bro, um, I just want to let you know that I normally I sleep with my phone on silent, but today I'm going to put it on loud. And it's really loud. So if it rings, I'll hear it straight away. I said, you have to, he goes, you have to promise me that even if it's just for a quick conversation or just to say something, that you, the first thing you do is call me. I was like, bro, don't worry, I'll call you. And, um, and I also said to him, I said, hey, before I left the car, I said to him, bro, I'm probably just going through like this like, anxiety. And when I wake up in the morning, I'll be all right. So I said, I don't really want to talk about it when I see you tomorrow because um, if I I don't want to bring up negative emotions if there's no need so I said is it cool if tomorrow if I don't talk about it we just don't talk about it he's like cool they, they dropped me that text my phone's on loud the next day bro we had, to, we had a couple of bits to do in it so the next day he comes picks me up like he didn't even mention it he just come getting on like regular like as if that didn't even happen and then at, towards the end of the day I said to him I said bro by the way bro and he was like yeah mm. I still want to mention it mm. but that's the end of the story but I'm mm -hmm. just saying yeah if you I know I said it in a really long-winded way, but <coughs> if you break down how he acted, bro, I think that for me, I can't speak for everyone else, yeah. I think that's such, that was a perfect way that he he extinguished that fire. First of all, he was an open ear to this. He, first of all, before even that situation, he's always been a friend yeah. that I feel like if I go to him or something like that, I, I won't be embarrassed. Yeah, That's that one. Number two, when I came to him with it, serious. No time for jokes. No, like... Ban R, no, yeah. like slight, like just full on serious listening, mm -hmm. focus. Number three, saying the right things. Like, how did you work out? Oh, I can't relate to it, but I remember when yeah, I had yeah, it, yeah. so I know it's serious. Number four, dropping me that text after saying, listen, I'm off, because that's like, wow, someone's got me yeah, that much yeah, where yeah. he's going to disturb his sleep in case I need him. And then number five, it was a level of respect, respecting that, respecting my intelligence enough to know that we're both intelligent to, enough to appreciate that the, what I'm thinking is stupid, like yeah, 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 not yeah. stupid, but it's like yeah. irrational. Yeah, irrational. Yeah. But when, but it's just not an irrational argument. The mm -hmm. argument is that for some reason my brain's gone into panic mode, and the situation is that my brain needs to be relaxed and and that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, because I reflected on this a few days, I was like, you know what, I'm going to talk about this on Freshly Grounded because perhaps people can listen to this my my that have, day that happened to me, and they can say, well, either. Um, if I'm the person who someone comes to me like that, I take them seriously, mm -hmm. and I, I use these steps to help them. Mm -hmm. And or if I'm the person who's going for anxiety, go to the friend who you feel like will take seriously and talk to them. Because bro, if I didn't talk to him, bro, I would have just in, I, I, and I was alone that night, so I would have been even worse. Because you know, Shaitan comes to you when you're alone. It would have just been like eating that. But the fact that I spoke to someone, bro, it felt so good. I just needed someone to listen, really. So did he witness you having? Like an anxiety, not attack, but like anxiety, like a moment of like pure anxiety. We were out together, and he witnessed you. Being, exactly, yeah. we, were, we were at a meeting. A meeting. We were at a meeting, and um, during the meeting, you during the meeting, I felt like my personality changed. But during the meeting, like so, uh, 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 like something triggered. So you focus on the meeting, and then your mind goes off somewhere else, thinking right. about something else. You might see something that will like remind you of something yeah, else, like, yeah. and it triggered, and it triggers into like start overthinking. So was the meeting then finished, not like kind of normally, or did the you? The meeting was finished normally because the person that we were having a meeting with never really. Uh, there was the first time I'm introducing, so yeah. I overthought even. Oh no, my yeah. Now I I must have come across like mad cold towards the end, or even that because when you're in that when your brain's in that zone you start overthinking everything which is weird because i don't necessarily and i don't ever want to come across like a hypochondriac because i don't necessarily go through anxiety too much yeah alhamdulillah um generally question, quite, do you, is that a common thing that you nah. nah so so that's why when it something like that happens i think that are even more so i worry about the fact that i'm worrying yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because it doesn't have regular i don't I, I wouldn't even say like once a month it happens like mm. i think on a very rare occasion and it was just like like i said what we were talking about a few months ago like it's a situation that's not a big deal yeah 
it's a situation that's not likely to happen and you start going but it, like I said it's not it's not the logic that's yeah, the issue course, it's that course. your brain it's has just actual, gone yeah. how you're feeling yeah, yeah exactly yeah. no you're right it's like it's like someone going like it's like you seeing it's like me having a conversation with you and going oh bro you know what like I've seen so many people in my life they come and they go like the, the one minute they're a millionaire next minute they're broke and we just have a normal like that's the kind of conversation me and you would have. Right. But in your mind, for some reason at that moment, you start thinking because you're opening yeah, no, Oregon no, store, no, you're no, opening yeah. Italy, you start going, Yeah, what am I doing? Like I'm not I'm, like this guy is definitely, I'm definitely. not gonna be able to run an America store, I'm not gonna be able to run an Italy store, I'm here in the UK. Yeah. Then you start thinking, if the business crashes, how am I gonna look after my family? If I don't look after my family, how are they gonna have a roof over their head? If they're not gonna have a roof over their head, my kids are gonna disown me. But and you start going like I'm gonna be hope but the and you know that's not realistic, no? Because in all of that, you'd catch yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, at that yeah, point, for yeah, some reason, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that kind of on the same lines of intrusive thoughts, or do you think anxiety and intrus intrusive thoughts are the same thing? But you know, often you hear people say like really intense intrusive thoughts. Is like, is that like those thoughts of you going broke and becoming homeless? Which, to be fair, it's strange you say that because you know, obviously, last episode we we're talking about obviously um, resale yeah. and that reality of I met someone who had it all and then lost it all, and it is a reality. Obviously, it's it's not a, a rare, um, sorry, it's not a often that someone does kind of lose it all overnight, but it's something that could possibly happen. What's anxiety and intrusive thoughts in the sense that thoughts of like losing it all and and everything going really bad? Is that is that an intrusive thought? Is that anxiety? Is that just something that people kind of always are always dealing with like worrying that things are going to go really wrong like is it i'm not sure because level, there must be like levels to it because i mean there is obviously mental health is um so complex i don't obviously don't really completely understand it all but there's i, I imagine every i imagine that most people have periods in their life when their mental state isn't maybe always as strong as it could be i.e bits of anxiety depression or whatever but there's obviously other people who kind of wake up and, and deal with it every day like Depression, anxiety. Yeah, like bipolar. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Is that, there's the kind of levels to it. And it's just kind of interesting. It kind of leads you on to the sense that where I live, there used to be a, a very large mental hospital. And then just down the road, there was a very, very large mental hospital as well. Like massive, huge mental hospitals that used to exist not even that long ago in our, in our, in our lifetime. And like now they don't exist at all and they generally don't exist that much anyway. Kind of like, well, I say men mental homes, I'm not sure what the, the, the correct term is. Um... But it's kind of left me thinking, I wonder what kind of patients used to be in these, because they were massive. Like what, what kind of level of like um, mental health were they dealing with? And what would, out, of, out today, obviously we, have, we don't see that many of these homes, like what kind of level of people would be in them, who would be out in the street? And it's just kind of interesting like how mental health was kind of viewed then and why there was so much obviously budget and resources to kind of deal with it. And now it doesn't seem to be as much. Yeah, I know a couple of people who have been in um, these kind of hospitals and I think that it's also scary for the patient in some regards because like you said, there's different levels of um, mental health issues and obviously we're speaking here just like having a conversation as boys in it because we, we don't necessarily know the medical far stats from, and stuff. From. But um, it can also be scary as a patient when you go into a, a hospital and there's people who are like on a level that you're not certainly so you feel scared yeah and you're like this isn't this isn't where I should be yeah this is yeah. where I should be but then there's yeah exactly there's a guy but do you on, get my um, point of sorry to interrupt you do you no get worries. my point how there used to be almost a, a bit more of a resources to it where I live cafe reading through it all the like uh, the history of it, it there used to be a lot of like you know a budget and resources very very close and now it doesn't seem to be as much it's just kind of like it's just kind of curious to how it, why it used to be like that and not so anymore. And whether do they replace that? Is that were those kind of all those patients that used to go there? Do they? Where would they be? Where are they? Kind of. Yeah, thing? I'm no. not sure. I'm not <coughs> sure because I would imagine that right now there's more of a budget to it because of the uh, level of awareness of course. that's now raised yeah. to it. Um, but they don't seem could to it, be. Could it be a situation where they've moved? I don't. They have. There's like there's three in Hertfordshire where I know that they used to be closed. there. and They're all just they don't oh. exist anymore. No, not sure. But yeah, yeah, it's just a, it's an interesting thought. Like. Also, what level would you? What, what level of patients would you have in there? You'd have obviously, when I say extreme, people who you could really see have kind of maybe issues, and then there'd be like lower levels of people who are dealing with, like I said, anxiety, depression. Yeah. You know. Um, there's a guy who um, I know and who went to um, a mental uh, hospital, and he um, he. 
sorry, but I've lost my track of thought. He speaks about it publicly. He speaks about it publicly. Um, shocker. But um, he, I don't know his. Um, his name's Kenny. If, but he's a he's a rapper. His rap, rap name is Shocker, and and, and he speaks about oh, it publicly. Oh, Shocker is his name. Yeah, Shocker is his uh, like US. rap name. You know, in the UK. Okay. Yeah. And um, but he does more like he's quite spiritual. He does like a lot of like spoken word about like I think he's a Christian, mm -hmm. and um, but he's he's quite public about his journey through um, mental health, going into the hospital and stuff like that. Yeah, and like what his experience was like. Mm -hmm. There, it'd be interesting to have him on actually. Yeah, sometime. Yeah, yeah it would be interesting because especially to do with his experience, I'll I'll, I'll I'll speak to him. Yeah, do. I'll see if we can have him on to speak about that yeah. experience because I know he's public with it and he likes to raise awareness yeah. about it because I think there is a stigma of, of people who go to the hospital and stuff. Yeah. And um, I think now is the, the best time to raise awareness yeah. uh, more than ever, isn't it? I'll really? speak to him. Yeah. But yeah, man. So, so anyway, the, the point in my story was that yeah. just like that. I think there, I, I did think that there was benefit in telling that story mm. in in on both ends. In if you feel like you're going through something, uh, because the number one thought I go through is right. Well, what I'm, if I explain this to someone, it sounds dumb. Mm. Like, like you'd go Faisal. Realistically, is that going to happen? But in my and, and but but the problem is that the reason I don't like explaining that to people is because it's like I know it's I yeah. know it's not yeah. logical, right? Um, and that's very embarrassing to speak to someone about that. It's very embarrassing because you're telling them something that you're worried about. It's just like if someone came to you with that, you'd be like, "Come on, bruv. But the, but the, the the thing is, if you have someone in your life that you think would take you seriously, go to that person, just explain it to them, and and you feel so much better. But the the caveat of that is that if you're the person who someone comes to you like that, you have to take that person seriously, no matter how yeah, for real, no matter how uh, like. Uh, silly it sounds because at that point they're just going through something where they just need their hand held for a minute yeah they just need reassurance yeah. ultimately don't they that there's someone there for them and to listen to them yeah no I agree yeah and then and then that, that story of how that that friend of mine dealt with it I've never experienced a, a situation where obviously it was very mild because it was just a bit of anxiety yeah. there's not a lot worse that people go through yeah, yeah. but the way he dealt with it he just said all the right things did all the right things at the right time alhamdulillah and oftentimes you don't actually need necessarily like someone to because you could be like oh, you're telling me this what can I do what do you yeah, want yeah you get off you your chest me? and they kind of say like and one or two things and it kind of I don't know, see, yeah, no, it works bro it works it works 100% 100% it works yeah it's not like I need something specifically there's nothing you could that's, do for that's me that's now, why you know, just, you know the people advise like if you are going through anything try and find someone to speak to because that conversation can just be so powerful and it's not necessarily they're going to give you the, the cure because it's not that but it's just having that conversation that communication yeah, it works. The problem is, is that you, not everyone has someone that they feel that they can go to with such a sensitive topic. For real? And True. That's definitely, I think, also the problem in my culture. Okay. Because it's a taboo subject, the worry is if you go to your parents with it, it's like, oh, you're just worrying over nothing. And I think that if you don't have a friend right now or a spouse mm. or... Um, family member that you can speak to about such a sensitive topic um, not leave them definitely not saying leave them or don't because they might be like a friend for something else and stuff but do try and find a friend that you feel like you can someone that you trust confidently yeah it's a trusting isn't it yeah does it have to be a friend it could be a teacher it could be someone at work it could be yeah, someone right. that you just know that you could just give you some time and just have a, a conversation with that trustworthy person sometimes it's better that it's someone at work or someone that you're not Maybe that, not that close that, with exactly yeah close with yeah because they can kind of judge it from a different perspective just give you a bit of for sure. It's, it's amazing the power of a conversation. It really it? is, bro. The power of a conversation. Like you said, I mean, it's not like your friend necessarily gave you a cure, but it's just how we, de how we dealt with it and how it made you feel was almost took the, took the pressure off you, didn't it? When you, when you kind of got it and understood that. And, and yeah, it's nice. It goes a long way. And when you're going through that, because your mind's frazzled, you forget basic principles because it took for him to ask me what worked before for me to remember yeah. Allah is how you think yeah. of it. I was like, oh yeah, that's what helped before. I had a conversation with someone yesterday, not exactly the same, someone who's not that happy, claims they're not that happy. I kind of tried to understand why and almost just listed all the things that I it seemed this person had and, 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 and suggested maybe just trying to be grateful kind of what you've got and understanding what you've got is really everything you could ever need and more and what really what most people want. And it's powerful, it's powerful, it's about being grateful and I think I think um, this kind of subject goes along with kind of practicing gratitude and they talk about successful people whether they're spiritual or not is you know they do morning affirmations and they, everything's about gratitude and at the beginning of the part of your day you're supposed to be grateful and practice these feelings like as Muslims that's what we do but that kind of like that that being grateful and and really thinking about what you've got who you are 
it goes it kind of like destroys like depression for, for me a little bit sometimes you get you think you're having a hard time and then you just take a little bit of time to really really just evaluate the reality of what's going on and that was the conversation yesterday and as I was even saying it, it was a benefit to myself as well you moan about x y and z but really take time to think about have you really got anything to moan about no generally not um, I, yeah, it's, it's interesting how sometimes when you're giving advice, you start reflecting definitely. on like how good this is. Because it's not like how good I'm this not, advice is, but like it's certainly like it helps it's not, I'm not in a position where I can dish out great advice about mental health. But when you're talking about your own experiences, you realise it's you kind of you kind of know the, you kind of know the the remedies, the medicines to these problems. You've got to just take some time out and, and think about it and be calm and and talk and you figure it out. A conversation helps in so many different ways, isn't it? Like, even if you, t even if we move away from mental health, but we talk mm. about like business or decision making, sometimes you speak to someone about something and they help you see from a different perspective. Definitely. Like, well, in there just now, like there was a decision I had to make, right? Mm -hmm. Just about whether something should go live or not with regards to um, like a um, like a, a piece of audio that's being launched. Is the most minor thing. Yeah, I overheard actually. Yeah. yeah. And I just couldn't make a decision. I was like, in one way, it's like the audio is not that good. In another way, it's beneficial. Like, should it go out? Should it not go out? And just, I played it to Omar and I explained the situation to him. He's completely out of the scenario. Yeah. And I just got his advice and it helped. It's just a conversation. It's like, what do you, yeah, I think ultimately that's, and you're like, yeah, you know what, you're right. Yeah. Well, sometimes you think, no, but what about this? Definitely. Conversations are just, it's so interesting getting insight into different people's like, I agree. Mindsets and stuff. Even like sometimes um, ha that you have to humble yourself to do that because um, like you might be, let's say for example, you're, you're, you're very knowledgeable about a specific thing, yeah? Mm. And then the other person um, isn't. Um, I, I'll give a specific e example of it won't make sense. So we're having this chat uh, with, uh, with the team and there's like a guy who's dealing with the ticketing for the tour, for example. And there's another guy who's dealing with the finances. C two completely different things, really. Mm. But it's important to me that when we're all talking, that everyone talks uh, about what they're doing right now, if we're having a group meeting, uh, bec because it's important that if this person wants to just give their two cents, that they're allowed to, because they might see it from a different perspective, even though they yeah. have nothing to do with your decision. Certainly. Ultimately, the decision's on you. Yeah. Whether that ticket, wh whatever you do with that ticket, yeah. is on you. Yeah. But just to get a mindset from that perspective is always helpful. So Definitely. I try and encourage that here. Yeah, I agree. Um, and does that also come into the of like asking for help, asking people's advice, like reaching out to people? But you have to humble yourself to do that, don't you? You certainly do. Because you could be like, no, this is my field. I've been doing ticketing for the last three events. Mm. I don't need anyone's advice. But if that, as long as that person respects that, mm. then it's always welcome. Because mm -hmm. that person has respect. Look, ultimately, the decision's yours. But what do you what do you think about this? Yeah. There's always has to be mutual respect between everyone, doesn't yeah, there? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, that's a really good topic actually, because that's something I was thinking about before. Oh yeah, do you know what that mutual respect thing? is something that I was reflecting on this morning. I was thinking that I heard this story once, right? Of this, um, do you know this mutual respect thing? I think that a lot of issues can happen in relationships, in marriages, in friendships, because people don't respect each other. Mm -hmm. And what they do instead is they think bad of the other person all the time. Like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. They're not doing that, they're not doing that, they're not yeah. doing that. But once, once it, in any relationship, even in a friendship, it, if a person believes that they're never doing enough, um, that's such a good way to be if if the other person is thinking they're not doing enough. We spoke about this before, didn't mm -hmm, we? Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the trick is, though, that both people have to be thinking like that. Yeah, certainly. One person can't be like, oh, do you know what? I'm just not doing enough in this marriage. But the other one's like, oh, yeah, he's not doing enough in this marriage. Then it's like, you're then this network yeah, work. Yeah, but if yeah. he's thinking I'm not doing enough in this marriage and she's thinking I'm not doing enough in this marriage the marriage will be so beautiful because they're always both trying harder of to course. impress each other and do more mm -hmm. so uh, the story that relates to that I can't remember I think it was like a story of a scholar of the past or something and he was outside um, cleaning up he was cleaning the yard he was cleaning the house or something I can't remember right and it's, it's mad because what happened is the wife was so embarrassed that her husband was cleaning the house because she was like I, um, like, why am I letting my husband clean the house when he's going out working this at the other? And so she was like, like, trying to get the thing off him, like, let me clean up. And he was like, no way. I feel Im he felt embarrassed that he's that the he felt embarrassed that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to help out around the house, and he ain't doing enough to help out around the house. Now imagine a situation where that's every marriage. 
bruv, he thinks he ain't doing enough, she thinks she ain't doing mm. enough. She's embarrassed, he's embarrassed. Mm. Bruv, they both always be like, yeah, no, no, no real, I'm doing this. No, no, I'm doing this. Like, you mean? Like, like bro, how beautiful yeah. is that, bro? Because, but the problem is nowadays, it's like, wow, well, like, he just did that yeah. and then he caught yeah. like what so I'm just meant to you know what I mean yeah. which is true because a lot of men take advantage a lot of women take advantage but if both were yeah. like I, I'm not doing enough imagine the levels bro you just be always be on top on, on your your relationship would be always A1 because you'll be like no 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 I'll do that I'll take care of this no no I'll take care of it like baby's crying in the middle of the night yeah, I'm going to get up yeah, for you course, no no I'll course, get up for you course, you sleep course, you got work course. in the morning nah but you've been doing course, it all day course. imagine bro the, you're beefing to yeah. no you've been up all day I'll with him I'm going to do it yeah nah you've been at work I'll do it I'll just, amazing man now if you relate that to that story to like any relationship yeah, business wise but imagine business wise you're like imagine if I was like oh this <clears> thing needs to be done Kareem that's your field can you just sort it out Rather, I, but oh, he said, I'll go, do you know what? I've got two minutes, let me do it. And he's like, no, no, that's, that's me. That's my yeah. responsibility. I'll yeah. do it. No, no, don't worry about it, but I'll do it. But it's just, obviously there's a level of like decisions have to be made. But if you just have that mindset as a blanket like layer, I think things will be productive and you eradicate those issues. Am I, I right or am I wrong? I, I agree. And I read, I, I saw my phone somewhere. I read a quote about a partnership and it wasn't, didn't say specifically what it was, but about someone trying to add more value than the other. And ultimately if one of them, if, if, if you're, as if you're always trying to give more than what your partner's giving, I think I looked at it, it was a bit on a business somewhere, but you're trying to give more than your partner's doing, um, that's what a partnership is basically. But obviously it has to be goes both ways because if it's one way, you'll quickly sink. Um, but I definitely can relate to it with my partnership in with business, but certainly at home as well. And um, But that's that's how you really kind of find harmony, isn't it? That's how that's how it works. If you're if you're not really put, putting, if you're not putting your your fair share of value in it won't work and the other one will clock it and, and, and there's no relationship there there's no partnership there it's just you know um, definitely something I've been more conscious of at, at home recently trying to just add a bit more value rather than just thinking oh no this is my this is what I do x y and z mm. when really that's out the window now it's let me I'm try and obviously I'm not gonna say I'm perfect but try and do those extra bits all the time and just trying to add as much value um, to whatever that where it is the dishwasher or wiping the table whatever it is like the things I used to think actually that's not really my that's not really my job title the, the, it goes so far doesn't it mm. it goes so so far bruv yeah the I think the um, the thing the, the biggest th thing is what you said of it, it has to be a two way street both people have to think along those lines and that's when it works yeah I, yeah and, and, and just never thinking I suppose that like I think the other thing is never th trying to think what the other person's thinking. It's always a bad idea, isn't it? it might, isn't it? It's like, but if you just think what you, you're, you're busy with just yourself. Do your thing. Yeah. And yeah, do, busy. As long as you're doing your thing and focusing on doing what you're, you're supposed to be doing, the best you can be doing and more, there should be no room for any anything else really, is it? That's what's dangerous. Those kind of thoughts are dangerous. Yeah, it is. Just overthinking in general is dangerous. Yeah. And that relates to the anxiety that I was having definitely, at that time, but definitely. even with just relationships and stuff definitely. like that, you start overthinking, bruv. Yeah, for real. Try and keep it more just simple and straight headed and just mm. yeah to this present time. But that's I mean, you can think of all these things when you when you're going when you when when you're when you're having that anxiety yeah. and all that crowd. I wish you could think rationally in a calm way like we're having this conversation, but I know for me it's 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 quite the opposite. You almost lose lose the control of your mind and you're just in some sort of crazy state with just like no rational thinking at all. It's just yeah. Not rational. But you're not. No one is when they're emotional. That's what I'm saying. Like, but yeah. that's, that, when you're having that kind of anxiety, you you can't rationally kind of remove yourself from it. It's just like you said, your brain's just fried. You kind of just your mind's just fried. Rational thoughts don't really make it. Don't really fix it. It's such a powerful thing, the brain, isn't it? The mind, just it's like certainly emotions, trying to balance all of them, different things. You're balancing emotions. You're balancing diet. You're balancing mindset. You're balancing like decisions, work, home. You have to have that good balance, that perfect balance in all of them. Otherwise, it's like what um, it's amazing what Musa said in the podcast that we shot with him. That's not even out yet because mm. we probably can put this one out beforehand. But he said, "What did he say?" He said that you know people want to try and balance their lives, mm. but what is balance? The balance is the the the, the life that the Prophet the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. The Sunnah. That's balance, fully balanced. He put it, he put it into very simple terms with that, didn't he? So he goes, people talking about I want to have a balance with my with my Deen and my dunya and whatever. He goes, the, the balance is the Sunnah. Yeah. <laughs> full stop. There's no. Yeah, he said there's no. You, you don't, don't balance the halal with haram. Yeah, yeah. That is the ba that is the balance. That is the balance. The perfect lifestyle. The Sunnah. Yeah, he put 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 it in perspective then he a little put bit. It in really good perspective. Yeah. Then. 
He also made a good comment. Obviously, I don't want to ruin any of his gems because it was a couple, but about about yeah. um, charity and business, and how how it's like a bird, and how each wing there needs to be charity and uh, and business just to, to make it fly. Basically, it's, yeah, there's gems. We won't ruin it. But, that was um, a powerful episode, man. It was good. It's always good. We so they're doing a they they just been nominated yeah, for the National that. Diversity yeah, Awards. I see that. I see that. I see that. Yeah, I'm fully behind Resol. Yeah. yeah, amazing. I'm reading a, a new book. Interesting. Right what are you yeah. reading? Have you heard of it? It's called Leaders Eat Last. Mm, I think I've heard of it. You can imagine what the concept yeah. is, isn't it? Any good? The first chapter wasn't great, I don't think, uh, but it's meant to be a really good book, and I'm listening to it, and it is getting better. Yeah. Out of all the books that you've read or listened to. What one stands out as the most powerful one that has an effect on you? Probably doing your terms. Probably the obstacle is the way. The obstacle is the it way. It helps with the mindset a bit. Obviously, you got to listen to it with a pinch of soul. You got to listen to it with a bit of hikmah. Mm. Um, but yeah, like the uh, the idea that you can turn an obstacle like you mean like obviously we know it as qadr like this is in your qadr. You can't deny it. But how are you going to use that and how are you going to react to it? Yeah. Um, and the best way to react to it is in a positive way. Mm-hmm. But so that's uh, an effect on you where you actually kind of contemplate that book. Yeah, in, yeah, 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 that's good. But there's many. There's a an, uh, uh, one that's had a real big effect on me recently in terms of leadership and stuff has been Bob Iger, the guy who is the CEO of Disney. Mm-hmm. How he makes decisions, how he hires, how he fires, how he thinks, how he respects these people. But I think leaders he lost is might be up there, you know, because it's a really powerful concept that if you're gonna if you put yourself in a leader posi- leadership position, which of you, for example, are in Menspire. You, you, you'll nosedive the company if you think about your success first. The success of your people is the success mm. of you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and therefore you eat last. Mm-hmm. So you put everyone yeah, else yeah, yeah. before you because that's the responsibility you've given yourself. If you didn't want that responsibility, you go be an employee, mm-hmm. and you have a good enough skill to be earning your dream salary already. But you don't want to be an employee. You want to be a leader. If, if you want to be a leader, you got to eat last. It's true. You got you got to like you got to take hits for your team. Uh, that's the essence of it. Powerful man. Yeah. Even that, con- that that concept alone, how powerful is that? I'm sure you've had to go through that. Certainly, so many yeah, times. yeah, many times. There's been times when, yeah, many times. Can you put pinpoint? Yeah, as in that. that I mean, what's, what's it called? It leaders leaders eat li- quite literally. So there's 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 been times when um, I've seen a month go by and everyone in the business has earned money. I've not earned a penny. But everyone's everyone's earned their wage, comfortable wage. I've not had a penny. It's real talk. I had a meeting with someone recently that I found really inspiring and he's a guy who um, has a company that is very, very successful, mm. um, incredibly successful, millions. Yeah. And he said that there's people in my company that are paid more, I pay, that are, I pay more than me. Because he goes, I only need this amount to live on, but I'm trying to build a successful thing here. And I was like, that's powerful, man. It's wow. inspiring coming from you because I want, my goal is to be on a level where, like you. Yeah. And that makes me reflect going, okay, hold on a second. I've got to think about myself here. Bro, like, I remember I was speaking to Kareem in there that the one thing I really, really want is, like, our, like my, my my setup, like, for my work. Like, my work space wants to be, like, this machine and this monitor here. And I, I just feel like I'll be effective with my work. And as, as much as it is great investment, because I will be effective with my work, can I get by with the workspace that I have now? Yes, especially considering the amount of investment it would take. Mm-hmm. And that inve- putting that invest that... Uh, risk when we can put that kind of asset somewhere where uh, we can grow the company mm. is a is a is a lot is a better idea right uh, but you have to bite the bullet and you say you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna sort out my man's workspace first because i need him to be a yeah. elite level yeah. and i'll get by on yeah, a yeah, laptop yeah, yeah. that doesn't yeah. have speakers yeah, you know what i mean real. yeah yeah man it's powerful the like you said the eating last thing um, I think that everyone can relate to it because we're talking about leadership in business, but yeah. bro, think about lead- everyone is a leader in some way. Yeah. Every man and every woman, whether you're a leader in terms of your household, whether you're a leader in terms of your family, whether you're leading in terms of you're just leading your child, um, whether you're a leader in the fact that you have Iman and you're trying to bring your family to have Iman, mm-hmm. like you're leading in that mm-hmm. angle. Mm-hmm. Everyone in some way is a leader. Mm-hmm. Like, so... That concept of leaders eat last has to, you know, work for everything. So, so even if you talk about the Iman thing, bruv, like if you're trying to give da'wah to your own yeah. family mm. and you're like, but you're you're not having that mindset of leaders eat last, but you're trying to bring them in, but 
that would mean that you have to show the deen uh, in aspects that um, you might have to like suffer. Like for example, mm. if in the deen it is recommended that you get gifts regularly, your pocket might be sore, but you got to take that hit because you're a leader in this position. You're trying to show them how we're meant to be. Yeah. We're meant to be people who give gifts to yeah, each other regularly. Yeah, yeah. So if that means that I have to, it's a bit yeah. tight for me this month, but do you know what I mean, bro? Yeah, I hear you. Good example. And that's an example that's nothing to do with business. Yeah. That's true. Everyone is a leader in their own right somehow. That's why I think that book is going to be beneficial to anyone. But like I said, I'm only like chapter it, yeah? four. Yeah, okay, so cool. I couldn't, I can't like say that it's, but the concept of it. Yeah, definitely. Concept Extremely though. true though. Extremely true. Not putting yourself first. But like you said, like the, generally if you are trying to grow something and you're trying to lead people, the effectiveness of you growing is based on how they grow. So your people being a priority is, is your growth, isn't it? You know what, bro? That guy, I'm going to actually say something that I think that you might be down for. That guy um, who wrote that book, Leaders It Last, I know nothing about yeah. him, but apparently he's, what's his name? Simon Sinek, yeah? I'll have to look more into the bottom, but apparently he's coming to London to do a talk. Mm -hmm. he, obviously, he's a mo he talks yeah, about yeah, yeah. leadership. Yeah, yeah. Um, if he is, I'm not mistaken, because he's done TED Talk stuff, would you be down to go? Definitely, yeah. Innit, innit? Yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Let me 100%. Let me look into that. Yeah, sweet. Uh, it'd be nice for us to go together, yeah, and especially definitely. considering, um, I'm sure there's a lot we can learn. Definitely, let's do that. The World Business Forum. Simon Sinek, 17th of April. That's our event. Yeah, it is, yeah. We're in Birmingham that day. Should we, lock off, should we lock off the tour? Or yeah, lock it off. Or? We might be able to benefit more. <laughs> Probably will. That's a shame, that, isn't it? Is it just one, one time? I'll find it? out. Okay. I'll look into it. Cool. I'll be on that though, 100%. Yeah, yeah, so will I. Yeah. Um, I, I, we don't do that stuff enough, you know. No. Like growing, grow from leadership. There's so many but amazing opportunities, especially if we live in London. What, what would you go to that you haven't been to? I think stuff like leadership um, stuff. I would, yeah. Because I think everyone can relate to that. I'm yeah. not saying I'm a massive leader, but I no, think but I'm, you have to be. You're, yeah. Everyone's a leader in some way, like we said. Okay. So leadership stuff I find yeah. interesting. I, I really love psychology stuff. Like, like recently I've really been into understanding child psychology because obviously I've just had a child. Yeah. I want to understand like when he's doing this, what does he mean? Like, so I've, I've been meaning to buy this child psychology book. It's called like the book that you wish your parents had or something. I don't okay. know if it's any good, but it's like a bestseller. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm just intrigued. I'm intrigued. Like yeah. if he's, when he's smiling, yeah. is he smiling because he's actually happy? Yeah. Cause we smile cause we're happy because we know that that's what happiness is. Yeah. Is it's happiness showing. though. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I'm not denying that. I hear you, that. I hear you, I hear you. I hear you. But yeah, you want to get, yeah. It's good. But, yeah, but even for any children, like even your uh, your boys, like at, at, at the age that Zayden's at now, understanding Yeah, why, I know, I know. Why did he not tell me that yeah, when he yeah, told yeah, me yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It? It's a good point. Why yeah. does he not tell me anything that he does at school? <laughs> He goes, I don't know. But then other he comes <laughs> out with a detailed experience of that he's that he's happened in another another day at the park or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe for him, school is his thing. My dad maybe. ain't there when I'm there. I just enjoy school. He, maybe. I don't want no one to He keeps it to school. himself. That's it's nice. So when we, we we drop him off, yeah. I see him go in, take his coat off, put it on, and then I then I walk down the side of the, the school and look look through the window and just watch how he operates when he gets in. It's amazing, man, because it's him in his own environment with bare of his friends around him. It's so he interesting. Like? He like? He's excited, happy, running around, grabs his name, stops, like just takes it all in, and just yeah, he's just very happy and excited and and just good energy. He just looks uh, like good energy. You know, that's amazing to watch. But you know what? They, them little moments, that ten seconds where you're looking at him through that window or running around. They are the moments that life is made trust, of, isn't it? Trust, trust, trust. Imagine you was like, oh, I can't do that because I I have to be at 8 a.m. meeting every day. You'd miss this that. This is it. It's something we've tried to introduce as a family for this year is um, walking them to school. So he goes on his bike and it's, yeah, obviously early start and actually walking. It's about... 15 minute walk oh that's nice but it's nice man that's it's nice. nice it's nice it's really it's, it's good to get them out there and, and, and obviously that fresh air but the experience that we have on the walk and then dropping off and stuff is, is really really nice it's a good way to start the day but yeah little experiences like that even this morning man uh, I had them both on me on the sofa and just chilling and I was just like oh, these are the, these are the these are the this is the best this is the best mm -hmm. thing of life it really really is just like I had my two little boys with me just chilling having their juice it was just oh, nice this, it's alhamdulillah these are the things in life that, that I'm, I'm interested in, man. These little, you know, special family moments and whatever. And watching growth and stuff, innit? Yeah, for real. Zachary has just started like once or twice 
holding the bottle by himself. Nice. Like when you feed him and Big he's development like, though, isn't it? Yeah. You think like, like you rate oh. them like right, they can actually hold their own. Yeah. I know. But he didn't do it much for long. Yeah, but he still you just yeah, yeah. kinda of no, like I know, but you rate him, you're like, right, yeah. you can do your own thing now, I rate that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Time goes fast, man. Like by next month, he'll be on like starting like weaning like little bits of food. Yeah, nice. You know they got those little yeah. pouches. Yeah, I know those little pouches. Good those little pouches. Things will change for you when they start eating food. I imagine it's a lot more effort as well. Yeah, the poo changes a little bit when they start yeah, eating I heard, food. I've yeah, heard. sorry just to say that loudly on this. Call dad's that? chatting. Wait and see. Mm-hmm. The best is yet to come, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> mm, not looking forward to that necessarily. How is it at home? Good, yeah. Yeah, I that was good. Yeah, yeah. You sleeping well on that. Yeah, generally, he had his injections again. Yeah, you sent me the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. It's a funny video, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. As soon as the injection goes, yeah, ah, of course. I you know. Can see that. The well, you had the bottle. You had the bottle for him, didn't you? Had the bottle ready. Yeah, I saw the bottle. Had the cowpaw. Had the cuddles. Yeah, I see that. I see that cuddles. Yeah. yeah. I didn't enjoy those those injections too much, man. But you know, needs must. Yeah, I was watching. In fact, I was watching the video. I was thinking, I don't want to even watch this video. Video. <laughs> you, you, I've had to see my own children getting that. I'm watching yours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said it to you. No, you were doing it at the time. I was oh, trying was to chat to you. I was like, easy. Like, I'm busy at the injections and sent me the video. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fobbed me off for a few days. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm joking. No. But did that affect him? Was he ill when he got back or anything like that? I know. Like, we, um, they, they recommend like cowpaw like Straight every away. few hours or whatever. Okay, yeah, so see, see. I was just kind of doing that. Yeah, alhamdulillah, he was all right. It's good. Yeah. But yeah, it's good, man. It's interesting because it, it's at the stage where every day is different. He's teething. Yeah. So he's like just constantly dribbling and sticking his hands in his mouth and stuff. And yeah. Yeah, man. It's like different different things, in it. Yeah, of course. Um, constantly. But it makes you want to make sure you're home on time and stuff, doesn't Certainly. it? Like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like it, it, you realize the value of work. Like work is very valuable, but there's a time for work and there's a time for home. People who work with me know that I'm out for for bath time. I'm out for bath really? time. Yeah, and have been like pretty much when I when I really deep the fact that I'm at work most of the day and I'm generally through the week missing like missing my children through the day. If I can't get home to put them to bed, like what am I really doing? Like that, that's how it felt to me, like in the sense that if I'm not going like, to help out and, and help out raise my children during the day because I'm at work, which I have to be at, if I can't get home at least to try and put them to see them the last bit of the day and, and do my little bit, for me, I was just like, this is, I can't, I'm not doing my bit. So I made it quite solid and it had quite like a, not a negative effect, but bear in mind, I used to work until quite late in the night and obviously then bath time, really, I need to be back 6.45, 7 latest to then I stick them straight in the bath. Obviously, they've got a routine and that. And obviously that cut away a lot of, time for like when I was cutting a lot of hair um, getting uh, getting, always going early but the big best thing I ever did and I said to someone recently who just had a baby talking to me about about time off and that I said look have a bit of time you need but just come back and now you've got a child just like change your your you need to change your work hours that's what needs to change like still work. Yeah, not taking a big chunk just, off yeah, and you're back allow it. Part, just yeah. like get to it you've got things on your mind but just like understand if you need to go at five o'clock and you need to come at 10 o'clock that like that's 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 what it is now you're a parent um and having that leverage to be able to kind of do that because i think it's for me anyway it was important man like i said i didn't feel like i was con- contributing enough like early stages as long as i can get back just do that bath time so strict Inshallah, I'm back every bath time. Yeah, that guy that I'm talking about, who I said I had a meeting with, who's uh, he play, pays employees yeah, more yeah. for that. He, um, I was speaking to him the other day, and he sent me a picture, and he was just, um, he was actually giving a bath to one of his boys, and I just thought, oh, like, the levels that he's on with regards to his work, like the way it's expanding, and you're at home at this time giving a bath to your boy, and he goes. Um, he goes, I just don't want to be remembered as a dad who wasn't there. Mm, he was always real, working. For real. And uh, he probably has to have, he, pro- he probably takes that pay cut and stuff because of that. But for him, it's non negotiable, bruv. I've got to do, I've got to be there for bath time. It's amazing, man, because when people can unlock that, unfortunately, a lot of people get stuck in that mindset of later, 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 later. If I work for the next 10 years hard and I don't see my kids, yeah. after 10 years, yeah, that's know, me, I'm at home. And it I never know. happens. No, nah, it doesn't. That's so the feeling, isn't it? That's, now, what, that's, yeah. what, that's what people think is that, like you won't see me much, but I'm building your life. So in ten years' time, you'll be grateful. But it, nah. Nah. cut cut back a little bit with the money. Spend more time with the family. Like yeah. that's that is life. Let's be honest. That's life. And you, you, say, you, you say you you're say you're doing that. F- you're, you're saying you're doing that for them. Like cut that down a little bit for them. Is I think goes a lot further than 
working all the hours in, of the day just to, you know, to go on a nicer holiday or whatever. I think, yeah, time with the family and that and your own time is, is, is very, is, is priceless, G. Very, very. Yeah, rather than remembering like one great holiday a year, you probably remember how you were raised throughout your yeah, childhood. Yeah, of course, and like your parents being there rather than being there with, with a wallet, being there for you and actually like, you know, that's the intention. Mm. But not everyone can do that, bro. A lot of people are working, like, uh, obviously a lot of fathers are working and they can't get back for thing, for, for bath time. They, they have to be in London or they have to be, they have to commute or whatever. It's not reality, but that means the weekend comes into play. Maybe spend a bit more time with them in the weekend, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. We're talking about, obviously, where you can control a decision. You're making yeah. a decision to, oh no, I choose this over this. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's not always practical, is it, for someone? Yeah. But you know what's mad is that Went to Asda the other day, yeah. Going up the escalator, first thing I see, bare basmati rice, oil, and all this kind of stuff. And the box, you know what it said? What? Prepare, it said something like, um, happy Ramadan or something like that. Really? And I was thinking, wow, like these supermarkets are ready. Wow. Two months before Ramadan, they're on oh, it now wow, already. Wow, wow, wow. I was thinking, I haven't even really? considered. Bro, I promise. I thought it was an accident that like they just used in last year's boxes or something. But then I clocked that all of the items that are in them boxes are Ramadan related items that are all related they to that. Like they must clock the market. Pop, it, it pops from like during like the, the amount of Muslims that are buying so much food from them. They they they, they they're gonna they're gonna but it's mid Feb, bro. Yeah, it's early. I know I know I'm not saying I'm not yeah. It's mental. They're going on like it's a Christmas thing. You know how they, they the Christmas Yeah, yeah, they go in and in. Yeah. They, but for them it's a marketing thing, yeah. Yeah. love it. It's a marketing thing that for them as well, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's early though, isn't it? That is a bit early, no? They're just getting ready. Anyway, um, that made me think, wow, Ramadan's... Yeah, to yeah, be fair, yeah. it is soon because before you know it... It's fairly soon, yeah. yeah. We might even be in Gambia for like the first date. That would be nice. Yeah. Would it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're yeah, not convinced. I, I think... No, I'm just thinking... For the first I'm, I'm thinking, date, you say? I think we might be there for the first day or like travelling back and first or something like that. It'll be like around that time, obviously depending when it comes in. But um, yeah, do you know what I've decided for Ramadan this year actually? Let's talk about this because this is a decision I've made. So every Ramadan I change my schedule Mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Especially last few years because it's been in the summer, Mm -hmm. I've become a night owl. Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed with the option to be able to choose to do that. But I'm not doing that this year. So what I normally do is uh, I'm up until Fajr and then yeah. I sleep after Fajr for a few hours and then I start my day. Uh, and my, my missus said something to me the other day. She said to me, she said, this Ramadan, change your, change your daily schedule. She goes, because at the end of every Ramadan, every Ramadan you say, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. Because um, you can't stand how much you have to flip your thing. And it's true because I do do that. And also one guilt I do have is that Ramadan is not meant to be, all right, for one month, I'm switching my schedule. Ramadan is meant to be, I'm going to set good habits in with my normal schedule to carry on. Yeah. To carry on. And I don't do that. Mm. Like I don't, I don't like keep that schedule of like being up all night. So I do want to, obviously in Ramadan, you do do a, obviously more about that than you would normally do. Granted. But and I might change this, but I'm thinking what to, to do this. To go sleep after like Tarawih and stuff until Fajr. What would that give you? Like what, two hours? Mm-hmm. You reckon? Because normally, yeah. normally I'm like, oh, it's only two hours. What's the point? But I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going to take, take that yeah, two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you sleep in that time? This last year I did, yeah. Did it, Back in it, the day, nice. uh, yeah, I had to though, just because... Back in the day when there was no children in the house, when you knew you could get that guaranteed sleep in, no problem. But for me, like when you realise you sometimes have to get up in the morning, there was no point staying up till Fudger because sometimes you have to get up in the morning anyway. So I generally, last year, slipped in a couple of sleeps, yeah. That's what I think I'm going to yeah. do. Yeah, I, remember, to, I, remember, I remember you said yeah. that last year. Yeah, yeah. I had to, I was too, literally too tired because I, I knew, I, I, back in the day, I was sleeping until 12 o'clock. That, when I first came to D and I first, Ramadan was beautiful That's in the sense that stayed up till Fudger. Even like, even sometimes stayed up like after Fudger, chilled for a bit, go to sleep almost when like, when it's light, and then you just and then I get up at like one, do duhur, and start but working. Doesn't feel right. That's, well, that's not. I can't do my my life doesn't exist, like it, it couldn't work like that now. In the yeah. sense, like there's kids and there's loads of other things going on. So I try and treat it and try and remain it as normal as possible now, just because I can't afford to be that tired during that time. I agree. So that's my plan. Yeah, you have I to. Think I think you realize a couple hours, uh, yeah, fajr, sleep a couple more definitely. hours, and if that means you get like a few less hours than a normal month, that's fine. As long as you get. 
I can be really, really honest with myself and, and quite often staying up till Fajr, those hours were quite often wasted, like more social, like not necessarily doing anything particularly mm. that beneficial. It's more like, oh, this is kind of cool. It's like our holiday, like everyone, like even some of the shops are open late, you're gonna have a late, late munch and whatever. But I realize it's not that beneficial, might as well just be getting some sleep. Yeah, Does I think you know I mean? my plan is get some sleep, wake up for Fajr, get some a couple hours more sleep. So let's say for example, two hours before, before Fajr, what time is Fajr gonna happen them days? Uh, it will be when um, What time will it come in? Like maybe like 3-ish okay? Yeah, around that time Let's say it comes in 3-ish Pre-fajr 3 30 or something Let's say I'm in bed by f- Even half 4 Yeah, back to bed Back to bed 3 hours Wake up half 7 That's 3 hours plus 2 hours That's 5 hours That's solid And then it's you could decent. possibly have a little you know, When that late asa comes Have that little snooze I was going to say For me that's beautiful I think what I'm going to do Is I'm going to implement Nap. After I finish work, come home, have a little nap. That is the best. You know what? After your hard day graft, you've got a few hours till you break fast, but you've got that little bit of time, have a little one hour nap, you beautiful, wake up, hungry, ready to go. Yeah, that is the one. Even though ideally you want to have that qailula between Dhuhr and Asr, but we can't do that. If you can, that if you can pattern that, we're talking about juggling so, busy, busy work schedules. Yeah. That nap After is beautiful. Asr, get a little nap. nap. Is beautiful. And also Put at that the Quran time, on and just listen yeah. to it and just drift off. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Yeah, I'll read that. I need that. I'm looking forward to it. Oh my gosh, look at the weather. Yeah, it's miserable, isn't it? You know what, bro? I yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna implement. I went to um, I went to the masjid I haven't been to for a long time, uh, where Josh took shahada. I'd already taken my shahada, but we both we both went up and took shahada together um, in front of the Jummah. Really beautiful masjid, London Coney. Uh, and I went there the other day um, just to read my asa, saw the Imam, and um, really good to catch up with him. He actually married me as well. He did my manakar, man- but he was saying how much of a fan of Freshly Grounded he was. No way. I was so I was so chuffed to be fair. Wow. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I thought, wow. It was great. He was really, really a real big fan. So. Wow. Yeah. It was good. It's a nice masjid That's still. Yeah. What an amazing opportunity. This is the, put, the, put, the, yeah, for real. Minded, man. I know, I know. so many, so many things, man. It's such a blessing, man. It's incredible. I've been able to talk to people, been able to meet people, yep. reflect. And so, bro, it's, it's not, it, it, very often <laughs> I'll have a conversation in Fresh Uganda and it will change the way I'm thinking about things for the better. Yeah. So, yeah, what a bl- in the other one, man. You, Allah could have chosen anyone. You almost made a good comment um, about the fact it's not really, it's not about you and I anymore at all. It's just a, it's just a platform. And you said that even if I wasn't even there, it could still technically run because it's a strong platform now. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's man. It's very good. Well done. No, well done to you. How, mu- how many episodes have we done? Am I right 149. in thinking? 149. Yeah. So that means next week. Is the big 150. <laughs> we have to do something Something decent. big for that, yeah. Something half decent. Half decent, yeah. Yeah. Should we call it quits for today? Yeah. So yeah. that we can have a little a natter. A little natter, a little some, do some planning. Do a bit of uh Yeah. Maybe some tea. Yeah. Um and uh, talk a bit about the tour and stuff. Yeah, that'd be good, yeah. Cool. Fair. Cool. Alright, let's do the intro. Cool. Thanks guys for listening. Thank you.